Sergeant America here. Boom. I am very thankful for my library. As I think I've mentioned quite a few times, I'm able to get a lot of great stuff there. Um, one of the things I recently picked up was Sweet Tooth, uh, Jeff Lemire, doing both the uh, art and the writing. Uh, definitely different. Uh, evidently, there is a plague in the near modern future. The uh, children are no longer being born unless they become a, this half-breed child of man and animal. It's not actually people having sex with animals, but evidently to humans, something happens, they have a crossbreed child. Uh, or a child with other characteristics. Sweet Tooth, uh, I believe had a name. Jeff, I want to say Gus. Gus. Um, was a, uh, a boy whose dad kept him in the forest. His mother had passed away from the plague. The father himself finally says that he was dying. And just gave Sweet Tooth the simple, you know, there were five main rules, but number one was don't leave the forest. One time as uh, Gus, or Sweet Tooth, gets close to the border, he finds a chocolate. Uh, his dad was upset. Uh, he knows that it's going to be time for Sweet Tooth to tackle the world by himself. Uh, you know, it, it's, it, it was definitely de a, a wonderful story in the sense that, I mean, it was unique in the sense of, you know, this post-apocalyptic child on his own. Uh, father knows that the, the boy has to go out into the world, but he's ill-equipped him because he's lied about how the world really is. Uh, eventually, two hunters find Gus, and um, they're getting ready to kill him when a third guy stops in and uh, kills both the hunters and takes Gus, well, asks Gus to come along. He understands that Gus likes chocolate, so he kind of convinces him that way to come along with him. Says so there's a preserve for people like Gus, and at that point, you know, with as much as uh, Gus loves chocolate, calls him Sweet Tooth. So Sweet Tooth, our, our main character, keeps encountering different groups of people. Um, there are those who want him for, in fact, almost everybody wants him for his hybrid uh, ness, and uh, each one wants it for a different reason. None of them, of course, good. That's always one of the things about a post-apocalyptic world is evidently we as people go to shit. And um, we decide at that point that, uh, you know, everything is to be used. So it does make the uh, person who's helping Sweet Tooth look somewhat in a, in a good manner. But, of course, you know, one of those things we've always questioned is, is this person always doing it for the right reason? Uh, you know, it was a very good, I should say, I enjoyed the story for what it was. I read it through. I don't know that I'll pick up the second one. Uh, it, I think you have to be in a certain state of mind to read a book like this. It definitely is for a lot of those people who pretty much read it all. I think it helps to, um, at that point, when you read so much DC, you read so much Marvel Everything is in that cookie cutter format. It is nice to pick up a book like this. Um, I think I've read enough independence right now that it didn't quite pique my interest like I thought it would. I definitely believe that I would not have enjoyed it issue to issue. I don't know that I feel that there would have been enough to keep me going from book to book. So I don't think I'll be picking that one up. Um, Empire of the Dead. Uh, illustrated by Alex Maliv and uh, written by George A. Romero. Uh, they do give tribute to him as uh, the Night of the Living Dead. There's a, a little throwback to that on kind of how all this kind of gets started. It is interesting combination of how we as humans deal with the zombies if we still had the upper hand. So this is The Walking Dead if we as humans were still in charge and things were going well. 
So the, the dead are used for different reasons. Uh, a lot of them, I think, still fall into patterns on what they used to do. Uh, people who sweep continue to sweep the ground. Uh, the mail carrier still trying to deliver mail, things like that. Uh, in this, I believe most of it is Manhattan, New York. So it definitely still has, you know, the sense, well, post-apocalyptic sweet tooth, everything has gone to hell. Post-apocalyptic New York with zombies that do their jobs, everything pretty much stays the same. Uh, there is, you know, of course, some things where, of course, the, the rich stay richer, the poor get poorer. Uh, there is a lot of social commentary in this. There is some uh, pure sense of evil where we use these creatures to battle each other and we sit in the arena and watch. But there is then also some hints that there is a golden lining to all this, too, that there is golden lining, silver lining, uh, that there is maybe still some sense of people in the zombies. Maybe there still is some good. Uh, there's one uh, professor who is wants to find out her, I believe, sister or brother after becoming a zombie, didn't kill her, protected her from other zombies. So she thinks there may still be more good in them that she could still get. Definitely was an enjoyable read. I think I would pick this second one up if I can find it. Uh, I don't know how well this is doing in sales. I haven't heard a whole lot of people talk about Empire of the Dead. Uh, but I did enjoy it. I mean, it was, it was a good read for what it was. Um, this is a Marvel book. Um, Sweet Tooth as a vertigo um, so I mean Marvel DC you know um, but once again thankful for my library thankful that they do have these books so I can sample them and figure out if I ever would want to buy them or you know read them in this format buy them in a hardcover or a omnibus or whatever I decide later so uh, definitely those are my thoughts on those two books thankful for having libraries thankful for reviews from other YouTubers, uh, and definitely enjoy once again just chatting about the comics. So, catchphrase. Boop, 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 boop.